Hello my dudes, my name is Tiffany, welcome back to my series, Internet Analysis, where I like to research and discuss things relevant to social issues and media. Today's video is going to explore those sketchy ads under viral tweets. When a tweet starts to get popular, how do you take advantage of the attention? What should you do with a drop of clout? Of course, you can promote your SoundCloud. Wow, this blew up. You can promote your Instagram and other socials. Or if you want to use your 15 seconds of Twitter fame for good, maybe you're gonna drop some petitions, go fund me's, maybe promote some small businesses. But you also have the opportunity to make some coin, and that is what leads to items like these being promoted below viral tweets. If you are an active Twitter user, you most likely have seen at least some of these items, including the ocean galaxy light, the sunset lamp, this detox mask, various squish plushies, slime clean and other kitchen or cleaning products, and perhaps a seal pillow. These are all very memeable items, kind of gimmicky stuff, the sort of stuff that you'd see in a Spencer's gift shop or something. So in this video, we're gonna discuss how these deals happen, and then later we're gonna dive into the specific products and the companies selling them. So as usual, I asked on my Instagram and Twitter if any of you happen to have experienced this. Did you have a popular tweet and then you were approached with some deals to promote some things? So gathering information from some people that I messaged along with other research, there seems to be a standard way that these deals go down. First of all, they are very casual. You'll just get a DM like, how much for promo? From what I've seen, most people get offered between 10 to 20 US dollars to post one tweet about a product. And sometimes the influencer will negotiate to only leave the tweet up for a limited amount of time, maybe 12 to 24 hours, and then they'll delete it. Okay, so what do you need to do? Basically just post this video or these photos in the thread of your popular tweet so that it shows up right beneath it. In terms of captions, just say something generic like, check out this cool thing, I love it. They really don't get too uh, creative or enthusiastic with these, which I understand. Then of course, add the link. We're gonna agree on a specific time for you to post, and then you'll get paid via PayPal or Cash App. And in terms of the follower response or the people who see these tweets and then see the ads, you get some encouraging responses, you know, get that coin. Of course, you also get comments calling you a sellout or a scammer. But I found that if you're just a random Twitter user or maybe an anonymous page, a meme page, you probably don't really care that much about getting a little bit of a negative reaction to these tweets. Unlike influencers or content creators who have more of a dedicated following who care about what they specifically promote and they might have to be a little bit more cautious with their ads. But again, for the average Twitter user, the risk is pretty low. If you can make a little bit of money from a tweet, why not? Well, let's get into that. Legal and ethical problem number one, undisclosed ads. The majority of these paid promotions are not labeled as such. Usually they don't say hashtag ad or hashtag sponsored or any other common indicator, but they're very obviously ads. Any Twitter person reading this thread can tell that these are just not like natural. Oh, by the way, I love these lights. Here's the link. People recognize them as ads. You're not necessarily fooling anyone. So my question is always, what is the benefit in not declaring an ad an ad? If people already recognize it as an ad, and honestly, if someone sees it and wants to buy that item, I don't think they're gonna care whether it's technically an ad or not. They're just gonna buy the thing. And by the way, some of these tweets do have hashtag ad, which is good, but it's also confusing because I've seen even in the same tweet thread, some posts are labeled hashtag ad and some are not. It's very inconsistent and it definitely clearly depends on who is paying for each promotion. So in this case, the Twitter user posting the ads is now an influencer a micro influencer maybe, or a new influencer, but still. So the influencer may not know the rules, the FTC guidelines that you have to declare when you're paid to say or promote something, or if you've been gifted something, you are supposed to mention that legally. And again, a lot of these people probably haven't done this before. So the companies reaching out to pay these influencers should absolutely be requiring that they label these posts as ads, but they're not. Because these companies usually don't seem to care about the legality of it all. They're usually not influencer marketing professionals, and we'll get into that later. And by the way, throughout this video, I'm speaking in generalizations when I'm talking about specific products or specific companies. My vague accusations don't necessarily apply to each and every one. I'm using these as examples, but I can't know for sure which of these companies or products is legit 
or is doing the work that they should be doing. So, you know, allegedly. <laughs> In the commentary or drama communities, allegedly is a magic word. Protects you from anything. Speaking of sponsors, today's video is sponsored by Likewise. What about the Queen's Gambit? Seen it. Community? Seen it. WandaVision? Seen it. Do you struggle to figure out what to watch next? Likewise. That's actually the name of today's sponsor. Likewise is an app that you can use to discover and share recommendations for movies, TV shows, podcasts, and books. Nathan and I watch a lot of movies and TV shows, but it's always a little bit of a struggle to figure out what to watch next because there's so many good things, but then you get decision fatigue and you end up wasting your whole night just scrolling through all of the different streaming platforms and not being able to decide. So Likewise combines smart technology algorithms and recommendations from real people to give you the best possible personalized recommendations. I'm gonna show you guys how I've been using the app. Of course, you want to track what you've been watching, what you've enjoyed, so that Likewise can learn your taste your taste profile. They have this swiping feature a little bit like a dating app where you can say if you've seen something, you can save it for later, or you can swipe it away if you wanna skip it. I do love the save feature so that you can actually keep track of what you're interested in because so often I'll say, ooh, that sounds interesting. I would love to watch that, but I don't write it down or I don't save it somewhere and then I completely forget what I wanted to watch. So that is an awesome way to keep track of your recommendations. I also love in their Discover tab, there's a browse feature, hidden gems, all the must watches or the underrated things on different platforms. And there's an ask feature. So if you're somebody who likes to ask questions, talk to the Likewise community, you can ask about specific movies and shows. I don't know, instead of asking everyone on all of your other social media platforms, hey, what are you watching? What are you enjoying? What's good? What should I watch next? Just download Likewise. You'll have all of the recommendations you could ever need. So I highly recommend that you guys check out Likewise. Of course, you can follow me. Click the link in the description. It's free to download. Why not? And as always, thank you guys for supporting the sponsors who support my channel. Thank you, Likewise. Likewise, let's get back into the video. So why do companies choose to promote their products this way? Basically, the whole point is to get around Twitter's official ad system and their other ad guidelines. So Twitter does have a regular ad system where you can buy ads just like on Facebook or Google or anything else, but apparently they cost more than this influencer marketing strategy and are apparently less effective. So some companies choose to just bypass this altogether by paying people on Twitter directly for either a tweet about the product or to retweet another tweet about the product. This has been called piggyback marketing because essentially the brand itself doesn't have to create original content and hope that it goes viral. They can find rising up and coming tweets and just piggyback on that success. Take advantage of something that's already popular and get some eyes on your product. And again, another benefit is they're often working with pretty inexperienced influencers. So you're able to take advantage of them. You can charge lower rates because these Twitter users don't really know what an ad is worth. So if you offer them 10 or 20 bucks, they're probably gonna say yes. So I don't think there's anything inherently wrong about doing sponsorships. Obviously I do sponsorships here on this channel very often, but disclosure is important and legally required. So make sure you check the FTC guidelines if you're in the United States. And if you're in any other country, just make sure you check your local guidelines as well because you don't wanna be breaking the law. And also you wanna be informing your other fellow internet users when you're doing a paid promotion. Legal and ethical problem number two, false product endorsements. The FTC basically says you cannot lie about a product that you're being paid to promote. So if you have not tried a product or if you hated it, you can't say that you loved it. In these viral tweet negotiations that often take place within a matter of minutes, obviously the influencer has not tried the product. They've never seen the product. They're not even being offered a chance to try the product because they are supposed to promote it now. I mean, maybe they happen to own the thing, but that is incredibly unlikely. And also the photos and videos that they're using to promote it are not theirs. They're sent by the company. And by the way that the tweets are captioned, it is supposed to imply that the Twitter user themselves has used the product, enjoys the product, personally endorses it, and that these photos and videos are theirs. Sometimes they tweet something vague like, check out this thing, which doesn't imply that they've used it. There's no personal endorsement, but still they are promoting it. Legal and ethical problem number three, monetizing stolen tweets. This might blow your mind, but a lot of things on the internet are not original. 
Much of it is 100% stolen, especially on Twitter. There are tons of accounts that get popular purely by stealing tweets word for word, and if it gets popular enough, they're able to get these deals and they can monetize stolen content. This also happens on Instagram, lots of meme pages, parody pages, whatever. It's common, but it's still unethical, okay? <laughs> Maybe it's naive of me to wish for a better internet. So now let's get into the products. You know, the things being sold, what's up with them? Again, I asked you guys on Instagram and Twitter and most of you have not ever bought these products or tried them. Some people told me that they have bought various things from these sorts of ads and that they never arrived. Is it a scam? Perhaps. Our YouTube pal Sarah Hawkinson told me that she bought the sunset lamp. And that particularly has been very popular lately on Instagram and TikTok, you know, it's aesthetic. It sets the mood. We love different colored lights these days. Also, many of us have been locked in our homes for over a year and we can always use more light even if it's artificial. Mood. There's always a crying baby in my videos these days. Anyway, then there's the problem of knockoffs. Many of these products were originally created at a higher price point, higher quality. As far as I can tell, the original sunset lamp was made in Italy and costs over a thousand dollars. So I can understand why cheaper knockoffs have become popular. Then there's the saga of the seal pillow, which was created in partnership with an aquarium and it is based on a real seal. This is her. As we unfortunately see in almost every industry, concepts and ideas are stolen, people create cheaper versions, and often the original marketing materials are stolen as well. So if you buy one of these things and it eventually arrives, if it ever arrives at all, you might have expected a sweet, huggable seal pillow. And maybe you received a small, angry seal. Or maybe the product doesn't work as promised, or it's just broken upon arrival. Maybe it smells like chemicals, or it's such terrible quality that you just don't end up using it. By the way, soapbox moment, please don't buy shitty gimmicky products that'll just end up in the trash or something that you'll laugh at once and then forget about. Mindful consumption, we can all do better. So what about the companies selling these products? I don't know exactly which of these companies, I can't say for sure, but many of these companies selling these products are drop shippers. Basically, drop shipping is when a customer buys from a store, the store buys the product from the supplier, and the supplier ships directly to the customer. So basically the dropshipper is a middleman, they do not have any of the products in stock, they don't handle shipping or handling, they are just the storefront. So when we're talking about these viral Twitter ads, the influencers have not tried the product, and most of the time the dropshippers selling the product probably haven't even tried it either. And that brings us to this whole get rich quick online, drop shipping, Amazon seller, e-commerce, community on YouTube. I learned a lot from watching these videos. They are very hustle culture. They are very capitalist. It's all about the profit, baby. Pain in my eyes. So this is basically how it goes. The drop shipper finds a viral or trendy product. It's actually a phone case that holds AirPods. So I thought it was really, really cool. And I think potentially this will go viral on Twitter. A really attractive, sexy product. And I was just scrolling through Twitter, wasting a bunch of my time. And I saw this product going viral, right? And I was like, damn, I wonder if like somebody's drop shipping this, right? And I was like, damn, there's a demand. So, you know, I gotta supply it. This guy happened to see a tweet about this mug with Arnold on it. And he was like, oh, I can take advantage of this popular tweet and I can sell this product. There are all these people who like this tweet. So he sets up a storefront really quick and then asks the original tweeter to promote the store. And the guy's like, did you just set this up? <laughs> Lent it and he goes, did you just set this up? And I said, yep. And I go, oh, I didn't see the just because at this point I didn't want him like copying what exactly what I did and then him taking all the money. I, I set it up a bit ago with organic promo. Ah. So now he thinks I'm the actual owner of this case that he just posted about. And the vast majority, if not all of these products are from AliExpress, which if you're familiar, it's basically a Chinese wholesale retailer where you can buy very, very cheap products and often lots of knockoffs. So looking at this AirPod phone case, for example, on AliExpress, it's being sold for like $4 each. And then shipping from China can obviously take a long time, sometimes up to 30 to 50 days, which is why a lot of customers complain when they buy these products because they take so long to arrive, if they ever do at all. And often they're just not expecting the shipping to take that long. We're in this Amazon Prime kind of world where we expect things to arrive within a day or two. So the thought of waiting like weeks 
or even months for something to arrive that you probably didn't even care about that much. By the time it shows up, you're not even gonna remember that you ordered it. Anyway, then you create a quick shop website. You can set it up in like 30 minutes. And again, none of these guys in these videos actually have the product that they're selling. So they just borrow any photos or videos that they can find to use in their marketing. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go through some of these videos and try and find a video that fits my kind of mark the most. And now the only thing that I need to edit on this video is just replacing the TikTok watermark with my logo watermark and that's pretty much it. So now you've got your product chosen, you have your website, you have your stolen marketing materials. Now you're gonna find some people who are decently popular on Twitter but not too expensive. So somebody with a couple thousand Twitter followers or a history of generating pretty popular tweets, offer to pay them 10 or 20 bucks to post the tweet and then pay a few other accounts to retweet that tweet. It's that easy. It could cost you 80 to 100 bucks max to do this Twitter promotion. This guy said that his fiance has a pretty popular Twitter. She's had a history of some tweets going viral. So he just asks her to do the original tweet. Can I use you since you go viral on Twitter? So you want to use me. Well, <laughs> not use you, but I guess use you to promote the tweet. I'll give you a percentage. I'll give you a percentage. And then at the end of the video, he's going over the financials and he says, I never said exactly what that percentage would be. So I'm going to give her about 1% that dollar and two cents. So that leaves a total profit for me at $100 even. Excuse me. I'd be like, okay, either ask me for a favor and I'll do it for free or don't ask me at all because offering me $1 is insulting. I don't care if you're my fiance, that's rude. Then he donated the rest, the $100 in profit to fight Australian wildfires. Okay, so basically your business plan is drop ship these very cheap products, steal the marketing materials and pay some people as little as possible to create fake hype around the products. Nice. Capitalism breeds innovation. By the way, this guy was talking about his Facebook and the reviews that people leave. And he said, oh, this guy actually left a real review. That's cool. You can fake it if you want. It really depends on how ethical you want to be. I didn't fake this. Like, I don't know how much faith and trust we've been putting into these random drop shippers of shitty products, but trust them less. The floor has lowered. And now I'm intrigued, okay? How much do these sellers actually earn? Most of these guys average about 100 to $150 in profit in a day or so. Total profit around here was about $3,000, which is pretty good for just you know, a month. It literally took me one hour to build this website and barely anything to manage it. This 24 hour challenge did $166 in net profit. Profit of $101.02. So yeah, there's some money to be made, but please don't do this. <laughs> Can you imagine if this video just got a bunch of people like, I'm gonna drop ship the next viral Twitter product. When I was first researching about this, I was like, how effective could Twitter influencer marketing be? Like how many impressions or views do the ad tweets get? Because obviously they don't get much direct engagement in terms of like likes or retweets because people are like, be gone drop shippers. They don't get much love. And then I thought maybe the strategy is just to flood Twitter to gain brand awareness, not necessarily just straight sales. But like for the brand, how valuable could one tweet be? Because it's so easy for it to be missed or ignored, whereas the audience is a lot more likely to engage with a sponsored YouTube video because there's a whole other video to watch along with the sponsorship or even a sponsored Instagram post or TikTok, they can still be entertaining. They can still very closely resemble the unsponsored native content, but uh, an ad tweet is just like pure ad. There's nothing else there. For Ocean Galaxy, a promotion linked to a viral tweet can yield three or four orders for the lights, which sell for $50. Ocean Galaxy Light brought in about $7,000 to $8,000 in revenue from Twitter in July. It also advertises on Facebook and Instagram and racked up $35,000 in sales across all platforms in that month. Another question I had is, are the influencers being paid fairly? Obviously, we've heard those dropshippers say that they are trying to pay as little as possible. So it's an interesting question question in terms of like what a fair rate would be for this sort of arrangement. Again, people can be paid 10, 20, maybe 30 bucks. That's usually around the maximum for a 24 hour post. Sometimes the brands offer commission links, which might sound like they can make you a lot more money, but in these situations, they probably make almost nothing because you're getting a tiny percentage of maybe like four or five sales coming from your link. So if you happen to want to get into the viral Twitter ad game, I'd say just take a flat fee, do your time limit, 12 to 24 hours max, 
and get out of there. And then I was wondering, what is a fair rate for popular tweets? My anonymous source in the industry basically said that there is no standard for Twitter, unlike YouTube, Instagram, TikTok. Those are a little bit easier to measure, like engagement, your expected views or likes or whatever on a post. But Twitter is a weird place for ads especially outside of Twitter's ad platform. When you see a creator promoting something on Twitter, it's just kind of like, it's so easy to ignore, like I said. And also Twitter is already such a hellscape. We do not need more ads on top of that. By the way though, um, content creators and influencers should unionize. If you guys know anything about any unionizing efforts, please send the info to me because I'm fascinated by this. We really need a lot more transparency in pay rates and standards because the lack of transparency in this industry leads to a lot of creators getting screwed over because they don't know what their worth is and it's really hard to find people who will tell you, hey, this is what I get charged. This is what this company charged me for this, for this many followers or this many likes. So unionize, baby. And lastly, I'm going to explore this avenue where sometimes people are paid to promote other tweets or other accounts. Sometimes it's like a quote tweet situation. And this is a terrible story time, diving into one notorious tweet thread that's been promoted and reposted so many times for years. It's become a meme on its own. Content warning, toxic diet culture and fat phobia ahead. So if you wanna skip this section, you can just go to this timestamp. The original tweet that has been reposted and promoted and stuff is this. I love when dudes from high school hit me up like, I don't know why we didn't talk when we were younger, um, because y'all made fun of me. A thread. And this girl starts her story time. She basically says she gained weight. She had low confidence. Then it finally clicked. I remember it was a Sunday night and my best friend had retweeted something that looked like spam, talking about this girl, Sarah, who discovered a way to lose weight. Not really sure if it was my anxiety or whether it was subconscious, but I just decided to read it, dot, dot, dot. It loaded a page that said, meet the Stanford master's student who lost 25 pounds with her university's money. And at first I was confused, but I kept scrolling down out of curiosity. If you want to read the article here, healthynewscenter.weightloss, blah, blah, blah. First of all, I love when a story is like, it sounded like such a scam. It sounded so not legit. It sounded like bullshit, but believe me, like those are the least trustworthy stories. So this particular account of Bella was created the exact same day that this tweet thread was posted. And again, this thread has been around for years. So like, this is a spam account. It just keeps getting reposted. Healthy News Center. Meet the Stanford master's student who lost 25 pounds with her university university's money. And it says it was posted today. First of all, love the appeal to respectability or our trustworthiness in elite academic institutions. Of course, it's a Stanford student and she's pursuing her master's, so we can trust her. This is Sarah Johnson. We have an Instagram post of a before and after, and this has almost four and a half million likes, including Kylie. Jenner? Then you read this article that's generous. So how did you make your discovery? She used her, her research money to figure this out. It's sort of a funny story. I always listen to the latest celebrity news before bed, and I happened to come across one particular interview with a celebrity nutritionist, unnamed, who swore by Ultra X Boost Keto and apple cider vinegar. She claimed that all of Hollywood's elite use it. I figured it couldn't hurt to try. Obviously, there's nothing but red flags in this whole Twitter thread the story and Sarah's article, her discovery. I love that Sarah's discovery as a Stanford master's student is literally, I just heard a celebrity nutritionist give advice and I did it. <laughs> That's my discovery. So this scam has been around for a lot of years, a couple of different iterations, but the basic story is the same. So the scam is a little bit elaborate. You know, they, they have the product, they create the fake article, the fake story. They definitely steal other people's weight loss photos and before and after photos because that's rampant in the industry. Then they try to promote the article through Twitter to create these fake stories, fake threads, and you're gonna have to fall down the whole rabbit hole and click on the things, blah, 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 to find out that it's a keto supplement. Again, if I have to repeat, do not buy this shit, it is a scam. 
It's terrible. So there we are. Hope you guys enjoyed today's video, diving into what the hell is up with these sketchy products promoted under viral tweets. And I guess the deeper you go, the worse it is. So that's fun. Appreciate you guys so much for watching. And now we have our small channel shout outs. Our first shout out goes to Amy Maggie. She has 4.4 thousand subscribers and she makes what she calls unsolicited environmental commentary. Great stuff about sustainability, veganism, she is an American living in Paris, so there's some interesting stuff going on there. I recommend her video, Your YouTube Fave is Killing the Planet. It's basically about the wastefulness of a lot of trends on YouTube, and I know a lot of you are into these sorts of topics, so I'm sure you're gonna enjoy it. Go check out Amy's channel, give her some love. One of you sent me this channel on Instagram, I think, and the channel name is Mary McGillivray. She has 1.8 thousand subscribers right now. She has a few very fascinating videos. The one I watched is Harry Potter from European Gothic to Trump's fascism, and it's examining the aesthetics and the architecture and how those tie into history and the political implications in the Harry Potter movies, which is a fascinating combination. And I learned a lot of great stuff from that video. So please go check out Mary's channel. Thank you guys so much. I appreciate that you support the shout outs that I give because again, these creators are awesome. They deserve to have more eyes on their wonderful content. And it brings me joy to introduce you to maybe some new internet friends or at least some new parasocial relationships. All right, that's all. Thank you so much. I'm just gonna go um, promote some lights on Twitter. Once again, thank you likewise for sponsoring this video. If you guys want to download, follow me on there, get some great recommendations, link in the description. Okay, thanks, bye.